Las Vegas, Sandy Castell and Friends. Welcome to Sandy Castell and Friends, produced by Michael Leonetti. Sandy Castell has been entertaining audiences for years on stage, screen, radio, and television. And for the next 60 minutes, she'll be talking with local and international performers, artists, authors, celebrities, and more, with special features like women in music and arts, shopping at Smith's, cooking with Chef Michael, and staying fit and fabulous for Forever. Forever. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Sandy Castell. Good morning. Welcome to Sandy Castell and Friends Variety Show with Chef Michael. What am I holding in my hand, Michael? Scarol. 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 <laughs> it's a green and it's got numbers on it. Who's this from? From Evan Davis. Evan Davis. And what's it for? That's for the show on the uh, 19th, which is the week after next. Oh, my gosh. Sunday. And it's fantastic. October uh, 19th. Yeah, because he, I said, Evan, what the hell? <laughs> What the hell what, did, did you, you run uh, in and throw you the money and then run out again? I, you know what's funny? <laughs> I made a phone call this morning talking to some of my friends. I'll put it away. And, uh, and I'll take it to the bank. He said this guy knocked on my door. He was nine foot. He said he had a 36, 35 uh, inch the, the, uh, the, the, forearm and a 27 inch neck. He said, what the hell? What are you doing? He what said, are you collecting? Got, what are you collecting? <laughs> he said, I'm having a layer daddy. He said, here's the money. He said, anyway. Just a reminder. Just yes. a gigolo and everywhere I I go. Oh, God, I better turn it yes, down. Yes, sister's oh rat's motherless, <laughs> dirty mother rat. Anyway, last night. Anyway, I was going to say. Ah, well, I can't hear. What's uh, This is so weird. It sounds like we're Ain't in a weird? tunnel. Yeah, yeah I'm not in a tunnel. I, I don't know. You know, all I can hear is you in a tunnel. That's right, baby. Yeah. Let me tell you, last <laughs> night we were at the Tuscany, ladies and Gentiles. And the my Tuscany, the Tuscany grill, grill. You must say Tuscany, Tuscany grill, grill because there's also the Tuscany Hotel, and people get confused. You well, know? it was funny because so. what ha you're right because what happened is Fabio's uh, son, you know, the kid, showed up at Tuscany. Showed up. Tuscany the, well, Hotel, they had the people right? from the um, what do you call the um, <laughs> the stratosphere uh, that they came in. They wanted us. Oh yeah, they've got a corporate the show, event, corporate coming event, up, and yeah. they looked at the show naturally. They went to the Tuscany place. Oh, they did. That's they why they got there that's a little why they got there later. So they went. Okay. But they loved the show. They wanted to book the oh, show for November. Oh, they missed me singing. But you know what? They were so sweet, oh, those nice. kids. I mean, yeah. they, they're what? Like 20 or something? Uh, ain't that adorable. amazing? That's yeah. the people that are buying the acts. You I know, know what I mean? I know. So I says, um, you know, they said, it's this exciting. is exactly what we're looking for, what Vegas was. A Vegas show. A Vegas show. show you know? Yes. So anyway, last night, Lou from the Tuscany. I got to get Lou's last, last name. I think it's Gambino. <laughs> Not money teaching. I want to get Lou. Lou, uh, Lou was there last night. I didn't see too much of him. You know what I mean? For no, some reason. I, I, you know why? Why? Because. He was we, in the kitchen. Because we moved it up to right. 7 o'clock. And so they had all the people that were there from the 6 o'clock seating right. and all that. And then we were coming in with the 7 o'clock seating and the show right. and stuff. So I think they had a, a packed house and, and they were right. packed in the it, kitchen. Yeah, it was jammed. And so Lou was actually back there right. helping out, you know. Well, he got the, the best kitchen. of both worlds because what happens we usually start at eight that rush was over but we're trying to keep the people that were there for the show so fo so far Lou we just had a phenomenal time oh great my gosh. time it was great just great and we had we a packed really house and we had some some regulars you know from Tuscany Grill which is right. great and then you we know, got Rocky we got, and his wife well, Rocco and, Rocco and, and his and wife that, who, you know, Annette they listen regulars. every morning hey Rock what's up you hey, dirty Rocco. son of a <laughs> anyway his wife's making frittata and abulenta today <laughs> with scarlet and beans and pasta bezel that's because she took your recipe and she's making it. She's yes. making it today. Oh, so we're having it. They were, what a great. And then the other guy's coming on. What a, this is a Tuscany customer, which is the guy who wrote the book. I know. I know. He's coming on tomorrow. Yeah, Lou Stanley. Lou Stanley's coming yeah. on, and he got a couple show tickets yeah. for that. Frank Bradley called me this criminal, morning. I think that's yes. the name of the title. Frank Bradley. Hope I got that right. Lou. Frank called me this morning. Yes, we will be there. Frank Bradley? Yeah. Oh. You know, and I got to tell you something. He's, he was my mentor yes. for me. He was. He's my mentor. You know what I mean? Uh, that I still work for. And then Al Rodriguez showed up with his lovely wife and came yes. up and then naturally Peter Anthony and his three kids. They were so well behaved. And Stephanie. Don't forget they're her kids too. I know, but they were so <laughs> well behaved. Oh, and I, I says, I got to tell you something. I said, I these kids are well behaved. And they're adorable. Adorable. And do you know that one of the girls is, is she says, she says she's into dance. She's already been dancing and, and then they talked 
about the, the other girl is liking uh, gymnastics. She does gymnastics. And uh, I said, so what's the little boy going to do? And she goes, I think golf. <laughs> I said, Start good. Started me on because I think he's like three years old. Wow. Yeah, he's adorable. And Peter Anthony, everybody Peter Anthony. was complimenting me. He on my, my hair last night. Everybody was complimenting me yeah, they were, on my course. hair color and complimenting you on your hair cut because he gave you a cut and then what um, haircut yeah well, this and kid then john did, did your color yeah you had uh john yeah, pete huh what was his name that kid yeah wasn't it john 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 or john john, uh, john, john phillips john, john somebody <laughs> no peter anthony told him he said yeah use uh use a little yeah. uh, six in uh, with a little r it looks nice you know, because my hair and, uh, ladies no. and gents so it's all white you know and like i said La when ladies you got, and gentle gentles, gentles <laughs> my hair's all white and when you got white hair it makes you look you know it puts uh 10 15 years on you whatever a few <laughs> strings of hair i have left <laughs> But anyway, uh, I had a yeah, great it, then, it, the gray hair puts right. the years on your. That's it does. right. And then that's Tom right. Nelly was there. I don't there. even know what a white hair is. <laughs> Tom, Tom Nelly, the king of the balloteers. Yes. And yes, Cece Tom Spencer Nelly got up. I love Cece. That's not King Cole's niece. Do you know when Cece walked in, there was a She's table a there. Kid, yeah. She walked in yep. and she came in, and the people just looked up and they said, "Oh my gosh, are you a movie star?" And I said, "Yes, she is." <laughs> and Cece kid. has a movie coming out. Yes, yeah, she's part of a movie that's coming. Out in the November. life story of that King Cole's niece. No, no, no. I, I, I can't remember what the name of the title is. But uh, you know, Cece's adorable, and she brought Alyasha with her. Alyasha and, was and great. Alyasha sang for us too, and uh, we had David DeCosta, of course, and we had Chad Michaels at the piano. We had Lou Lacey um, on. Uh, oops, did I say his name? Oops, Lou Spider. Rewind. No. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, on bass, and yep. we had of course Santo Savino on drums, and I. I gotta tell you, you and Santo, what an act you guys did last night. But you're, you're, oh you're my not God. mentioning the most important guy. Who? Jimmy Melodore. Oh, Jimmy. Well, he's legendary, so everybody knows him. <laughs> I was busting his... Of course. His... Jimmy, you were fabulous. Fabulous. So I said, Jimmy, what do you got that music stand in front of you for? He, he, that's his comfort zone. He said, I, I got it. I need it. What do you bust up my hump yeah, for? Yeah, don't forget all those notes that he plays. They're pretty no, complicated does. notes, Jimmy you know, does. and it's no, a, I the way that they're Jimmy. formulated. I but I got to be careful, because sometimes I push the envelope, and people say, I'm out on the uh, microphone. Yeah, yeah, you think and so? And I bust the hump. Anyway, if they Lou's said, out there... Uh, can we turn? Do if something? Lou I'm is like, out you know, there, here. if Lou is out there from the Tuscany, would you please give us a call? I'm going to see if he's listening in. I know he got out late last night. Seven three one twelve thirty. That's seven three one twelve thirty. Dear Lou, Mike, or Jerry, please give us a call. We want to hear from you. Call me. Don't be afraid. Could you, you shut her off, call please? Could somebody shut this Maybe chick off? Maybe it's late, but just oh, there they are. Who's, call who's me. Who's calling? Save on. <laughs> Who's calling? Who the hell's calling? You, you bust my hump about the phone. Hey, once. Once out of a dozen times that yours goes off, okay? Come on. Listen, if you're just tuning in now, you're listening to Sandy Castell and Friends Variety Show. We've got a very special guest coming up soon, and he's going to be calling in by Skype. Right. So Who is it? Yeah, it's uh, Skip Adada. Kip. Uh-oh. <laughs> Kip Adada. Sorry. Sorry, Kip. Actually, I was reading your blog this morning. And and I'll talk to you about it when you when you get on the uh, Skype here. Yeah. But yeah. Um, it was really funny, you know. He talks about a lot of different things, and one of them is names and how his entire life everybody has spelled his name incorrectly, right. a d o t t a instead of a d d o t t a. And uh, and I went through the is same thing, you know. I went through the same thing. Is he Italian? No, he's not Italian. He's Sicilian. Oh, he's Sicilian. He says, yeah, you know, Sicilians don't consider this, themselves Italians, you know. No. No, I don't know okay. why. I guess because they're on a little different, you know, well, they're down there on the bottom of the boot, I, I and it's a little about different the thing. Good cuisine of food. I know Sicilian Let's food. I want to hear about. I used Sicilian to watch him all the time on the Carson show. Yeah, yeah, you know. So he's anyway, great, he's I great. guess he's trying to call in right now. Is that it? He was going to call back in a little bit. He's oh, gonna he's going to call back in a little bit. Right, okay. Right. Until then, what we want to do is uh, we want to find out. I, I, I want to hear one about one of your recipes because last night, I know, I know, I think you got mad at me because I introduced you as Chef Michael. Yeah, I'm really sorry, but it's just. I'm so used That's to right. it, you know, because we're here every morning. Well, you know it takes me saying? out of character. Chef, I mean, Chef Michael. Chef Michael. I mean, the, 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 somebody's expecting me to go up and roll I a know, meatball. You know, well, we could get a little hat for you to wear while no, you're playing the No, that's quite drums, all right. Don't you think? No, yeah, it's a little just Chef Michael hat. Don't you? You know, I appreciate that. <laughs> here I'm Chef Michael, but when I get on the stage, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? You know, in this corner, ladies and gentlemen, weighing 195. In this corner, we got Chef Michael. 10 and 0. And 10 and 0. Will, 9 will, by knockouts, 1 TKO. He will knock you out with his cooking. That's 
true because you know when I used to box, I I, did, I was such a handsome kid. I didn't want to get hit in the face. Hey, you know, and the guys, yes. Oh, go ahead. And the guy said, Lady, this is the wrong sport for you to be in. <laughs> That's right. You are going to get hit in the mug. You, you know? know, but speaking of cooking, do you know what Diana Pascal was doing all what day Diana yesterday? Diana Pascal doing? She, she, last night she said, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. I said, Why are you so tired? She goes, I was cooking biscotti all day. And I oh, said, my God. Why? What were you doing? Getting ready for Christmas? She says, Yes, I got to do it ahead of time. Then I freeze them. And I said, You should have called the girls. You should have called Lisa and Madeline and myself and Pirco. And we'll come over and help you make the biscotti. Sandra, do you realize we're almost sold out for the show? Sold out. I know. I know. If you've really, we've only Jesus got a few God. seats left. Only a few seats. So if you want to get your seats for the October 19th big band date with, uh, it's an evening mm -hmm. in concert with Dick Castell Orchestra, including Michael Leonetti, Jimmy Molidor, Peter Pavone, and Mark Giovi. Right. Oh my gosh. And the 16 piece big band over at Canyon Gate Country Club. Give us a call at 702 348 5707. That's 702 348 5707. Also, uh, somebody was supposed to drop off an envelope for me last uh, yesterday, and I, I didn't get it. So, if you were supposed to drop off an envelope at underneath my. What is that? That Sandy, little rug takes, on the porch, takes, you know. You know, there's prisons that you can get in easier than <laughs> get into get Canyon, Canyon Gate. Gate. I did leave their it's name, amazing. though. It's so. amazing. What can, so. i never been. I went to Canyon Gate. I actually walked through the gate. They frisked me. <laughs> I said, what am I doing? It's because you got the look. Is that what it is? I got it's the look. Sorry, Mr. Lenny, but we got a frisk. Yeah, we got a frisk. I said, well, help Well, they yourself. figured you had some money in your pockets. <laughs> well, right. I said, I just came from Smith's. I said, what's going on? Anyway, the phone is ringing. The phone, phone is, is ringing for me. me. Me and my, my gal, guy. the oh birds are singing <laughs> for me and my gal. Where's Rock? Rocco, where are you, buddy? Pick hey, up listen. the phone, you dirty son of a... Anyway, if you're just tuning in now, you're listening to Sandy Castell and Friends Variety Show, and we've got a very special guest, Kip yes. Adotta, and uh, he's going to be here. He's going to be Skyping in today. That's so Skyping? That'll be wonderful. Yes, Oh, yes. my God. Yeah, and so we'll, we'll be right back after a message from our sponsors with Kip Adotta. Kip Adotta. Hey, okay. baby, what's going on? Ciao. Jolie, Jolie, Jolie. on KLAB. A wonderful way to start your day. This is Sandy Castell and Friends. Here again, your host, Sandy Castell. Hi, and welcome back to Sandy Castell and Friends Variety Show with Chef Michael. Hi, Chef Michael. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we had such a good time last night at Tuscany Grill. Yes. And you know what? I had the prime rib again. I have to admit, you know, I, I just wanted I just wanted that meat and potatoes meal, and it was so, so good. And I want to say thank you to the staff. The staff there, Michael, is so amazing. They made a fortune of money last night. Yeah, and they, but they are so nice. You know, yeah. they, you know, one thing about our friends, and I mean that. Yeah. They, they know these kids, you know, they know these kids work very hard. Yeah. And you know what I mean? And, and they appreciate it. And they appreciate it. it. Yes. And it's nice when the, the the our friends, you know what I mean? And also lose people, too. They leave good tips. Oh, gosh, yes. You know what I mean? Because they really depend on it. I want to tell you something, Sam. All jokes aside, you know, like I said, I don't know how long we're going to be singing at the Tuscany. It's really up to Lou and Mike. Because I, I want to publicly thank them. Because what these guys did is they, they kind of rearranged their whole situation for us. They, You know, it's not a showroom. It's a restaurant. You know, and thanks to these guys they made us come up for a month you know we were only going to do two weeks and Lou extended another two weeks I so know. I said them last night thank you Lou thank you Lou thank I you said, Jerry you know look at your figures see thank what you, you want to do and I want to say this to you whatever you want is okay with me I'm for those guys 100% I could never uh, thank them enough for what they have done for us and I love them guys you know what I mean and what's so nice is these people lose people because they know the people that are up there you know, they're uh, when I, I don't like to say elderly but they're they're of mature age and they come in and they want to sit down and have a nice dinner, you know what I mean? And uh, having a show is something that's kind of out out the uh, out of the way, but it's good. And by, by doing that, I met Ro Rocco and his lovely wife, Rocco and Annette. You know, and so many new people that are there, which is really great. And I, Lou, I, I don't know if you're listening or not, but if you are, we want to, Sandy and I want to thank you. Thank you. Because the words "no" is my not my vocabulary. You know, you know when they called Sinatra and they said to Sinatra, "I want you to appear at a certain place at a certain time." He did it. You know what I'm trying to say to you. So, my allegiance is to you, my friend, is to the day I die for your kindness that you have showed by bringing our show to your place. Yeah, we appreciate it. As long it. as you're making money, that's all we care. You know what I mean? So, if we do another week or whatever you want to do, you're the boss. Stop touching me, Sandy. Stop it. All right, who's on the phone? 
We got somebody on the phone. Who's on the phone? Well, well actually, we have Kip so, Adana. Not Kip, hey, buddy. What's up? Hi, Kip. Hi. How are good you? Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, Kip, to I you. Want, I want... Hello? Oh, well, I'm here. I'm waiting for an opening. Go no, ahead, go, buddy. Go, go. Swing it, baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you can't do that, Kip. You got to jump right in. This is like family, you know. <laughs> well, I, I was hoping to Skype with you this morning, but we've got a technical problem there. Ah, forget Skype. Don't we don't care about, about it. it. You know, we, the important buddy. thing is that you're here. I am, and I'm looking so good. I know. I know. And listen, Kip, I got to tell you, I went to your website, and uh, I saw your blog, and I was reading some of your things that you were talking about, and of course, I responded on one of them. Did you see it? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Well, you know, the thing about the name, and I know you've, you've lived your entire life with everybody spelling it the wrong way. Well, uh, yeah, I have a very common misspelling. You do. And I've been, I've had, had to dealt with the same thing. And mine is because my, you know, name is Castell. And it's spelled with a K. But I don't care my entire life. I could go up to a counter at the pharmacy and I could say, you know, Sandy Castell. You know, and they'll look and they'll look and they'll come back and they say, sorry, we don't have anything for you. And I say, but it's Sandy Castell with a K. And they go back and they look and look and they come back and they say, sorry, we don't have anything. Finally, I'm like, did you check under K? And they said, no. I, <laughs> I'm like, but they just don't think about it. They hear C for some reason. So uh, finally, I started saying, you know, it's Sandy Castell, like pastel with a K. And for some reason, that helps people get it. You know what I mean? I, I'm afraid I do. <laughs> so listen, I noticed on your website, you have listed first and foremost that you are a father, a grandfather, a songwriter, and then an entertainer. So you list yeah. you list everything else before entertainer that in the importance of the the in the order of importance for you. And I, yeah. I want to ask you about that. Why is father the number one most important thing on your list that you are listed as? I can't imagine why I would have done anything in life that wasn't didn't have family as the catalyst for it. I, I can't imagine uh, uh, my mind can't imagine an example of anyone who would take up a profession. Uh, well, let me put, rephrase that. I can't imagine myself taking up any profession that wasn't simply to support my family. You know, Michael is um, is really is uh, and family is really important to Michael, and he cooks for us. Tell him about Sunday night dinners, Michael. Well, why that's so important? Well, Kim, you're Italian. You said you're Sicilian, 100 percent. I'm full-blooded Sicilian, and I'm no more Italian than Puerto Rico is American. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Well, you know, as a, you know, growing up in Philadelphia, South Philadelphia, I was very blessed to be taught because I wrote a cookbook and being a chef. My grandmother, my great grandmother, but I cooked a real because I'm Napoli Don and Sicilian. My family, my father was from Sicily, my mother was Napoli Don, so I got the best of both worlds. Because you well know, the Sicilian sauce is completely different than the people from Napoli that are from Naples. Because I was Absolutely. telling everybody in my neighborhood as a kid. We have people, Marca John, Food John, Calabrese, Brutzes, Sicilian, Navali Don. Every household on Sunday, and you should notice, you're an East Coast guy, all right, cooked the same stuff. They made lasagna, everybody made, we called it gravy. Out here they call it sauce. In, right, gravy was, I first heard that use in Cleveland. Right, gravy, uh, gravy. Yeah. Uh, in, in Italy, you eat. In Sicily, we feed you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, you know, I got to tell you something. Uh, as a young man, because I think I'm a little bit older than you, but as a young man, <laughs> I, uh, I'll, I'll I, take it. I watched you. <laughs> I watched you on the Carson show, and I got to tell you, I always admired your wit. You know, and uh, as a, I'm, I'm not a comic. I'm, that's not my thing. I'm a, I'm an entertainer. You're, you're, performer. you're a chef and a drummer. Right, <laughs> right. You got to believe it. But you know, being in Philadelphia, we always busted everybody's cojones. You know what I mean? And my kind yeah, of comedy, you know, I is don't more. Deal with that. 
I don't deal with that currency. I, I don't do it. I know. I, I, I can't imagine why anyone would would uh, bust the chops of a paying customer. <laughs> Well, Rickles made a lot of money doing that. Let me see. Let me yeah, that. and Rickles and Rickles ends his show with uh, the song. But I'm a nice guy. Yeah, he yeah. He pops out every show. Right. He doesn't own it. Don Rickles and his ilk has done more damage to the art of comedy than anyone living today. Well, so what? what you know, what's different about the way you do it? Then I have to, and then I have to go up and clean up the mess because <laughs> because the audience has been trained to believe uh -huh. that the comedy don't. I don't want to sit up front; they'll pick on me. Yeah, you're right. right. And that is not the case. Right. That's the case in Don Rickles, and I've been in Don Rickles' company in the past, and the guy can't turn the switch off. Right. He can't turn it off. This guy isn't married. He's got no kids. He doesn't know anything about mowing a lawn. All he knows is, oh, we got the Negro over there. Oh, he's got a knife. Look out. Well, you know what? A lot of com I, I think a lot of comedians are like that. I, I, I agree, you know, that a lot of comedians are all... And when I saw Robin Williams at the uh, restaurant one time, you know, a long time ago, when he yeah, was first starting out, great actor, and, uh, you know, and he was always... He was on it the entire time at the dinner table. Right. You know? Well, let me, let me say this. I, I don't want to. I want to just turn it for just a minute. What is your favorite Italian dish? Yeah. What do you What do you really or enjoy? Or Sicilian. Oh, dish. What is your favorite? You, you were, said, Mike. I, you this is what I love. I was watching you yesterday on a uh, a segment of your your show, and you were talking about. Um, Oh, you know, sometimes my mind is not on my side. But pasta fujol. Pasta fujol. Yeah, pasta fujol. Well, you know, to tell you the truth, the, 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 and I'm going to be honest, the best pasta fujol outside of my grandmother was the Tuscany because it's like kind of orange. You know, it's not really red with the Catalina beans and they got the Dittalini how they, macaroni. How do they do that? Oh, how they do it? Yeah. yeah well, you know, what, you know what changes the color of sauce? Butter. They use a ham, you can use a ham hock. That's the key to that. Now, my father did the pasta pizzilla. Now, here's my father, God rest his soul's recipe for pasta pizzilla. You can do it al bianga. Now, in Italian, al bianga means white. Al bianga means white in Italian. Now, my father made yeah. it red. Now, this is what he did. He got the oil and garlic and the onion. And the onion in Italian, you say it jabol. Jabola. That's how you say onion in Italian. And my father would caramelize it. And then he would get a can of the tomatoes, the fresh tomatoes in the can. He'd crush it with his hand. Okay. Now, you could use puree if you want. Some people, believe it or not, if they use a, uh, the tomato paste. And they would put that in there. And he would add the water to it. And then he would add two cans of the peas. But the the ingredients of the key of pasta pizzail, it's salt, pepper, a little bit of oregano. Here comes the key. Here comes the key. Sweet basil. Not basil the gold. Sweet basil. The dry sweet basil. That's the key to pasta basil. What's and the I'm, difference between bazanagol and uh, well, sweet basil? I don't well, know. Sweet, it's a sweet basil. The basil that's dried out. That's what. It is. But they kind of they kind of cure it. Okay. It's a, it's it's more of like an anise taste, like anisette. You know what anisette is? The um, anise, yeah, anise, anise right, seed, right, yeah, right. The uh, yeah. sambuca on that line. But that's the key because a lot of people when you when you got a heavy hand in oregano, which is oregano to the American Americans know it as oregano. Oregano. So, right. <laughs> what they use if you. Use Use too much, you're dead. That means me, Kip. You know, right. I'm a medigan. Right, because Sandy's brutes, calabres, but mostly mayonnaise. Yeah, and that's the way I like my meat the ball of sandwiches. So with a little mayonnaise and white Kip, bread. Last week we had Sunday dinner. Michael. Yeah. Michael. Yeah, Paisan. I'm holding in my hand right now. A pepperoni. I'm holding in my hand a pound of fusilli. Oh, my favorite. Now, I have, I've got to ship this in from Manhattan. Because these these fancy pants around here don't even know what real fusilli is. No, I love fusilli. Yeah, see, he's on the West Coast right now. He's in California. California. I'm in, yeah. I'm in, I'm in Beverly Hills, California. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and I, I, I have my fusilli shipped in from, uh, from uh, New York. And I've got a whole cupboard full of this... 
store Wagmans. Wagmans Italian classics. Oh my God, that's my. You know something, Kip? That's my favorite. Outside of bruciatelli, bruciatelli pasta. That's my grandfather because I love my grandfather. Whatever he liked, I liked. But fusilli is my favorite. And for those people that are listening, because we got 90,000 listeners that listen to us every day. I thought it was 91.5. Well, nine, whatever. <laughs> the bottom line is, is when you make fusilli, ladies and gentlemen, you get that water boiling and you drop that fusilli in and with a little bit of oil in the water. If you start... Hello? What? Well, I had this. I had this mook come to me. This I'm mook? fixing him a, a, a pasta, and he comes over and says, "Kip, you don't put oil in the water." What? <laughs> Oh, what? that guy's full of SHI. Once you get to know him, you can add yeah. the T. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. You got to put the oil because if not, and then here's the thing with Fusilli, well, everybody. The oil keep the uh, keep yeah, it. Yeah, it doesn't make it stick. So it but here's stick. but here's the thing, Sandy. I when know When you that. make the Fusilli and you turn it, I'm yeah. telling you, everybody, be very careful. You can't turn it because it'll break. You want it to stay solid, and you want to make the uh, Fusilli a little al dente because if you co- overcook 100%. it, it's called mushad. Mushad means it's too soft. Hundred percent. Am I right or wrong, Kip? I put it in. I put it in. This fusilli is quite hearty. There's no hole down the middle. It's quite hearty. And it takes after a full boil, after I've got my olive oil in the water. Right. <laughs> so that when I put my fusilli in, it takes a bath in the oil. And when I pour the fusilli out, it takes another bath in the oil. And, and uh, it, it, I cook it for 14 minutes. Yeah, you're, you're right, because it's a little, the fusilli's a little thick. It's, it's like thick. bruciatelli. You know, it's not thin, you know, so you got, you're right. You, you did gotta, it right. you got to cook it, and it's still al dente. Right, exactly. Well, you know, Kip, if you come to Vegas one day, and I hope someday that you have the opportunity to come to Vegas, I would love to have you at our home, me and Sandy's, and I would love you to, I would make whatever your heart's desire, but you got to remember. Hold on a minute. Hold on. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh. Hold on a minute. Go ahead, buddy. <laughs> Wait a minute, is this common knowledge, or did you just j- jump the shark? What? <laughs> what did I do? What happened? Are you trying to tell me? Now, I've heard a lot of stories in my life, but if you think I'm going to sit here and accept the fact that you're living with Sandy Castell, you've got another thing coming. Why? What they do? <laughs> she fell in love with my. She fell in love with my cooking, Kip. Haven't you noticed they gained twenty pounds, Kip, this last year? <laughs> you know, Kip, you want to laugh? I made her. You, you know what steak pizza oil is, don't you? You know what steak pizza oil. I made that for her. She said, "Oh my God, I said, what heaven, is this? What is this? What is this?" I got the filet mignon, and I got. I have a deli slicer, and I sliced it real thin, and I made. I made steak pizza oil, and she went out of her mind. You know, because like I said, <laughs> dishes that I make is pasta bazel, and beans, uzu. Fleet, all the old Italian dishes. This is what I was taught. Today they got these names. I, they, I we go in restaurants. I never heard of these names in my life. Right. Like, I never, never heard of these names because when we were kids, right we were now, poor. yeah, right now I'm taken out of the freezer because I like to bring my meat to room temperature before I cook it. All right, and I'm just got to. What have I have here? Beef. Cubed steak, two of them, All on right. the counter. All right. And, and uh, I'm, I'm going to do something with those. Here's where my hard suit is, uh, uh, Michael. I'm an amateur cook. I'm not a pro. And there's a difference. A big, 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 big difference. We were at Saks Fifth Avenue the other day. Went into the tea room. I ordered the corn and crab chowder. And look, that guy is a pro. (laughs) He's a pro. People think that uh, in every walk of life, yeah, there's amateur pilots, there's amateur this, there's amateur that, and there's amateur comedians coming out of our ears. Those are not professionals, they're amateurs. So I'm an amateur cook, and what I'm best at, my hard suit is, I'm best at looking at the kitchen, what I've got, okay, here's the deal, I gotta make a meal out of what I've got, and I'm very good at that. I don't follow recipes, I, I don't, I don't do that, but and I, I serve a pretty good meal. I do all the cooking in this home. And um, 
and uh, I'm, I'm pretty fairly proud of myself. I think I think you would enjoy my cooking, although I I I know I know for sure that I don't have the techniques and the prowess that you do, Michael. Well, no, Michael exactly. started out at a young age. You know, his, I was seven. His, yeah, his mom, his grandmother gave him the spoon at 18 years old, yeah, and, and then he in, took over the cooking. Yeah, they called me in the living room, yeah. and uh, I thought somebody passed away. <laughs> you know, I said, "What's that? I'm serious. I, my Uncle Frank, my Aunt Mariette, everybody was in here, and my grandma I said, Grandma, I said, give it to you again. The way she said, what's going on? And she handed me the spoon. Now, in my neighborhood. And you're the, talking about the kitchen spoon. Yes. And I, I, if you, like I said, once you went on the air, that, I had the wooden spoon, which I still have that same spoon. That I, got, I got hit in the ass with it a hundred times. It also, makes, it also makes a great pitching iron. I yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. So what happened is, is that she handed me the spoon. And from the age of 18 years old, and I'm 62 years old today, I cooked for my family, Avigil, Christmas Eve dinner, Thanksgiving, Easter Sunday. My grandmother sat down, and I was the one that took, I took over, which was a great honor for me. And Sandy said something very profound. She said, why did they give it to you, Mike, and not your other cousins that, that cooked? I said, because I stuck to the traditional way they did it. I did. I emulated yeah. my grandmother. I didn't alter yeah. her recipe. I right. went exactly the way she did it. And you know what? A lot of these dishes are peasant dishes, yes. Kip. And the thing of it is, is we don't go into a restaurant to get those kind of dishes Can't today. And so when people come over to the house and they have this food, they just go crazy over it. Right. Crazy. And I'm yeah. telling you, you they keep coming back. If you own a restaurant and you're serving this kind of food, guess what? You don't need parking. <laughs> you're right. And, and Sandy and I are looking to open up a supper club. And, and yeah. I'm being honest with you, Kip. This is exactly what I want to do. I, you know, Because i got so many people that do that. There's a lot of great restaurants in Las Vegas. Oh, yeah. The Tuscany, they're all terrific. But me, uh, but you I'm, know what? Go ahead. What do you think of? What do you think of what used to be what I considered a top-notch restaurant, and maybe not so much anymore, but you tell me, Piero's. There was a time, you're right, but you know what I loved better than Piero's was the, uh, the place right across the street, right down the street. That they Chateau down. Vegas? Chateau Vegas. Oh, Chateau Vegas. Chateau you Vegas. remember that, don't you, Kip? No. no. No, you never went well, there? When, well, I was oh in my Vegas gosh, in 74, and I was when the I chef at Vegas. the Tower of Pizza. <laughs> when I go to Vegas, I never leave the hotel. Oh, okay. <laughs> you Ever. know what? You know what, Kip? You know, you may may be an amateur cook or chef, but you're not amateur when it comes to writing funny songs. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> you take I, you I take work. things and you twist them around. You give us something a little clever, you know. I I say. Hit them where they ain't. Hit them where they if, ain't. If, <laughs> hit them where they ain't. Whatever they're doing, I ain't. Uh, um, look, I, I had a thought, and then, Sandy, you put your cloud hopper right on it, and it's gone now. Yeah. Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> you had a thought, and now it's gone. <laughs> you know, you got to get anyway, the, you got to keep a pad by your side so you can jot those down really quickly. I, I do, but right now I'm dealing with the with the uh, meat on the counter. The right cube now. steak, huh? Well, <laughs> easy if you make yeah. that brajol. Take it easy, Kip. When you how do you stuff your brajol? Wait a minute. My grandmother, like you, my grandmother raised me. She took me out of the orphanage. When my my mom, Josephine, she was a little goose. And uh, she, I, the only memory I have of her is her left breast and nipple. And it was nice. <laughs> and and she, at 18 months, she took my mouth against, all away from her nipple and put me down and flew the coop. I never met the lady. Oh. <laughs> However, and then I was put in an orphanage. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, my grandmother, Dona Chicha Francesca Adolta, my grandmother did not, well, did not approve of this at all, but she bided her time. She waited. And finally, my father comes to her and he says, Ma, will you co-sign for me so I can buy a 49 Cadillac? She says, okay, Franco, 
I'm going to co-sign it for you. But then you're going to sign the paper, and I'm going to go get Kippy, right? Ah. Uh. And and um, and uh, she said, "Don't you worry. I'm going to take care of Kippy. You don't have to worry." And she did. She picked me up out of the uh, the children's home at the age of two and a half, and brought me back home and raised me. Uh, through my childhood and and i had the same experience that michael had uh, and she brought me along i did all the i did all the laundry i did all the ironing i cleaned and she did all the cooking <laughs> and i watched i watched this woman cook right so whatever experience i got was that uh, from my grandmother, Dona Chicha Francesca Adolta. Well, Kip, Kip, now, you, you, you know, you write, a, you write a blog, you write this every single day, you said. Every day. Every day. I and, put up a video every day. And it's kipadada.com. Yeah. A-D-D-O-T-T-A. Yeah, Kip, K-I, one P, K-I-P is a Peter, A-D-D-O-T-T-A. When my, when my, um, my godfather, Michael, came into Ellis Island. <laughs> He's in line, and he in the queue to go up to the table. And he, he comes up to the table, and he's eating grapes. So all of a sudden, I don't know what his name was before that, but it became at that moment Michael Mangiaragina. Mangiaragina. That means eat the grapes. Uh, eat the grapes. Eat the grapes. Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you so much, Kip, for being a guest today we on our show. You, and thank you so you much. You know, that, that um, invitation that Michael sent out to you sticks, okay? So when you come to Las Vegas, you got to give us a call. Love and to come have over you, buddy. Because, Michael, you, you will love getting in the kitchen with yes. Michael. You guys will uh, definitely love and that. And if you get a well, chance, I'm go. Gonna, I'm going to stand near the kitchen and watch. <laughs> and watch. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you, Kip. Thank you, Kip. Have a wonderful day. Right. And I'm going to check Thank out your blog. You I already much. signed up for it. Thanks, okay. buddy. God bless you, Kip. God bless you. Have a good day. What Thank a you. What a nice bye -bye. man. Bye-bye. What a nice man this guy was. He I know. People. I know. You know we Sicilian. Got so, Sicilian. we got so many people, so many callers. Who's I on know. the line? Who's Jerry. Jerry. Oh, we got Jerry. Hi, Hi Jerry. Buddy. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Chef Michael. How Hi, you Jerry. doing? What's up, buddy? Not much. I heard you had a good time last night. <laughs> oh, yeah, we had we a ball. Did. <laughs> Rock the Rock hey, building, Jerry, huh? my buddy. I just wrecked the greatest chef in the world. See, That's right. I love you, Jerry. We had a great time. We had a good time. Guess what I ate this morning for breakfast? I swear to God, I had your cheesecake. Cheesecake. Oh, I, had I a thought piece maybe you had some... Pasta oh, no, no. I had some prime yeah. rib <laughs> with Jerry, eggs. Oh, yeah, Jerry, rib. what's awesome. Lou's last name? What's Lou's last name? The Phillips. The Silla? De Phillips. De Phillips. Oh, De Phillips. Lou De Phillips. You know, I got to tell you something. I'm going to say this on the air. Okay, we just got off the phone with Kip Adada, Yes. Who was was on the Johnny Carson show for years, and we talked about it. I want I want everybody to know something, ladies and gentlemen. Not because I love these people, and I really mean that. I would do anything for the Tuscany Grill. In Henderson, That's they right. opened up their hearts to me. They opened up their, their their restaurant to me. They made us put a show in there when it's not designed for a show. You know what I mean? And I can never thank you guys enough for what you've done. I, as, as long as you want us there, we'll always be there on Wednesday. If you don't want us there, say, Mike, we love you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> They'll just well, come and eat don't, there. Come and eat. We don't give a, <laughs> We don't care. Either way, either way, yeah. we'll be there. Because here's the best part. Yeah, we love it. When we're done playing at the Tuscan. I put my head on a pillar. The Grasso family, the, the Pasco family, they're going to go back to your Jolet. restaurant. Jolet. They're going to go back to eat oh at your place. Oh, my gosh. They love With so it. many other places, they're That's never great. going to go back to that joint. Yeah, but yeah. your place, they're going to go we back because you got yeah. the best food. Your wife is the best. She's a wonderful young lady. I felt kind of bad that you weren't there listening. I was looking forward to seeing you. Yeah, but you're, yeah, you know, your staff is great, too. Your staff, oh, they you. did great. They made. They said, Mike, we made our mortgage payment <laughs> for the, because all my <laughs> friends, they made more than we did. I think they we <laughs> think about that. What were you going to say, go. Jerry? What were you going to say? What were you going to say, buddy? You were going to say... I said, there you go. That's good. That's good. That's uh, like that they took care of them. Well, ladies and gentlemen that's listening out there today, I want you to do yourself a favor. 
Get in the car. Go to the Tuscany Grill. Grill. And I want you to, now listen to me. If anybody doesn't like these people's cooking, Ooh. I'm dead serious. I'll give I'll give you your money back. <laughs> Their food is the best. Their oh, meat, yeah. this kids' meatballs is second to none. Oh, you know what I saw last night? You What'd know you what say? Carl had? Carl Grosso, he had that big what was it? Calzone. No, that that big. It looks like a steak, but it's uh, uh, a veal chop. A veal chop. Holy oh cow! Oh my god! And that thing was humongous. Oh, and, and delicious. And and Lisa had right. the the prime rib, and Diana Pascal had the uh, what she have the um, right. Oh, I can't remember now. Well, anyway, chicken, chicken um, parmesan. The or something. prime rib that you have is, 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 is forty seven <laughs> inches thick. Yeah, it's big. <laughs> and I'm telling you something as a joke. What? I, this is what I did. I got a spoon. I got a tablespoon. And it, and everybody at the table, I said, folks, watch this. And I cut that. Cut, pri- the, cut the prime pri- rib. With a tablespoon. <laughs> to show you how tender that is. And I'll tell you, I am so proud that we had the opportunity of shooting the show. And I'm in the kitchen with you because you are a great, great, great Chef, yes. you're not a soup can. Yeah. You're a great, <laughs> chef. great That's chef. Thank you. Yeah, we love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Love All right. You. So we'll see you All again right. Wednesday night. See you Wednesday night. Oh, awesome. Looking forward. To okay, it. great. Thanks, love you. you, buddy. Okay, okay. bye. Um, bye. Who else? Is I think on the we got line? T Fox on the phone. T Fox, how you doing? On. Put everybody on. Yeah, let's get. We've got T Fox and Flurry. Flurry, real quick for Chef Mike. Flurry, yeah, I'm here. How you doing? All right, hold on, T. We got how many people? Three, two. Okay, and we got. Robert Gordy, too. Who's on, who's on first? Okay, we'll uh, make it quick. We'll use T Fox number one. Come on, T. Real, real quick, Chef Mike, I just bought last night for the first time in a long time a two-inch ribeye steak over at Whole Foods, <laughs> and and I am trying to figure out what to do with this. When you said sliced real thin, a, a, a great piece of meat. What did you exactly? What can I make out of this? When you said slice it thin, it sounded like a good idea. Okay, you I make wanna, you can make steak pizza all. Steak pizza I owe them. Just before you take it out, you get a handful of Parmesan cheese and throw it over that steak. I'm telling you something, T. You'll go out of your mind. You'll be singing Italian arias when you eat this food. And T, you can go to you, T. You can go to the Facebook page and you can see that recipe because I know I Diane just that. got all that down. <laughs> Well, that's good. Well, what I'll do, right after my Phantom of the Opera tonight, I'm going to do with Sammy Davis. I'm going to do Sammy Davis' Phantom of the Opera tonight. Oh, you know, good. Cherry. That's and over at the uh, Fiesta. That's a Fiesta. Oh, I'm going to nail it. I want you guys to come if you can. But I just want to say, after that, I'm going to cook this steak tonight. I'm going to follow Chef Mike. All right, that's great. A great idea. Okay, and great. I thank you, and I love you guys so much. You're going tonight to at 7 o'clock, call. right? <laughs> Tonight at 7 o'clock, I will be doing Phantom of the Opera. At the Fiesta. Fox. Sounds Fox great. Over. Sherry Gordy right. presents. Thank yes. you, buddy. Sherry okay. Gordy presents with Tony Sakata. So, Tony uh, Saka. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, give him, a, give him a kiss for me. <laughs> Tell him your buddy that he never has yeah, me we'll on be, the air. We'll be there. We'll be there. Okay, okay next in line. Okay, Thank you, T. Thank okay. you, buddy. Bye-bye. We love you. Next in Bye. line is the great Robert Gordy. Buddy, shoot. Hey, how you doing, Chef Good. Michael and Sandy? I got a surprise for you guys on the line. I've got Sherry Gordy herself on the line. Hey! Hi, Sherry. How you doing? I'm wonderful. You guys are making me so hungry. I know. <laughs> well, that's great. But what the hell are you doing up so early? <laughs> Robert woke me up. <laughs> he woke you up, that said, son of up. a gun. What are you doing, get Bobby? Up. Leave that kid alone. I told her, get up. We got to call in the Sandy and Chef Michael show and uh, tell them about the great show we're going to have tonight at the Fiesta Rancho Club, Tequila, Sherry Gordy, and Tony Saka. Sherry, oh, Sherry, gotta come down. Gotta uh, Sherry, I just got to tell you, you're doing such a fabulous job yeah. over there. And I know this is like your second home here now because, yes, you, it is. yeah, you've got all these wonderful performers. This is where we came to see T Fox and we saw Monique up there, Brewster, and we saw, let's <laughs> See, we saw Brooks. C.C. Spencer. Thurman. We met C.C. Spencer. Spencer. Yes. Well, all the gang. You know, you you're just.
doing a fabulous job, and thank you well, so we've much. Got a great lineup tonight. Uh, Tony Saka is uh, on location with a special edition of his Las Vegas Rocks variety show. That's great, and he's hosting it, and we're so excited. We have a huge lineup. Well, we're going to be there seven o'clock at the Fiesta. Yeah, we'll be down. I'm going to go down just to bust Tony's. Car. We told Tony. We told him. We told him. Yeah, he's yeah. nervous now, boy. If he knows I'm coming. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sherry, and we'll see you tonight. Thank and you, Robert, Sherry. thank you. Thank you, everybody. All right, love thank you guys. You so much. Okay, we and then we've got Flurry much. too on the phone, right? Flurry. Yes. Hey, Flurry with the ink spots. Flurry, What's up, you got to you got to come over to the fiesta tonight. We'll all hang out, okay? Well, what's going on now? We have Ink Spots at last. They're going to be at the Viva Las Vegas All tomorrow. Right. Oh, tomorrow night? Okay, good. Listen, yeah, why don't you... show tomorrow night. Flurry, and, uh, Flurry why don't you come you... on the show tomorrow? Okay, if they mention you guys' name, I'm going to come over, give them a personal personal handshake and a howdy. Sounds good. And, uh, and uh, we're going to be rocking and rolling with the Ink Spots. And, good, we'll uh, see the Ink Spots. It's going to be a fun night. Flurry, we'll see you tomorrow night then. And come on the show tomorrow morning though okay listen if you're okay. just tuning in now you're listening to sandy castell and friends variety show with chef michael with kippa dada with all the gang from the sea uh, of uh, sherry gordy presents and we'll see you tomorrow morning here on klav 12 30 a.m bye i'm going to the fiesta tonight i'm going to get tony Saka real good